Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu. I run SeishuPhotography.com and AmataPictures.com. Keep that in mind. Today, though, I'm speaking with Corey Hudson, a photographer based in New Haven, and he is doing something remarkable, absolutely awesome. He's been on uh, Facebook, and I just, I just met with him uh, briefly on Facebook, and I said, hey, what's, what's his what's this project all about? And he got excited to say, let's talk about it. So here we are. Corey, thanks and welcome to joining me here, man. Thank you so much for having me. Let's start off right asking you, what is this project about and what is it called? I love the name of the project, by the way. Thank you. Uh, it's called Hearts of Strangers and it's a photojournalism project that centers around uh, particular challenges that people experience as, as human beings. And uh, the reason why I focus on that is to bring other people who may be experiencing something uh, equally challenging or something similar, some hope or inspiration and courage to get through whatever they're going through and to know that they're not alone. Give me an idea. I mean, you've done some of these, uh, the, some parts of this project already, right? Yes. Uh, give me a sense of like what it is that takes place. Like, do you just walk up to somebody you don't know and say, hey, Let's have a conversation, and at the end of it, you go, I'm going to take a picture of you now. Is that cool? Uh, yeah, I do a couple of things. Uh, when I first started out, it was a process of just approaching strangers that I passed on the street, asking them if I could take their, their photo, and then asking them uh, a question. Uh, and the questions then were centered around gratitude, um, because I was doing it for a friend's project, which was centered around gratitude. But I found in the process of doing that, that the things that led people to lead more grateful lives were actually the darker stories, the more painful experiences, some of the traumas, the losses, and grief in their life. And uh, that's really what resonated with people. So I wanted to tap into that. So I began this project, and, and now I have people reaching out to me, which is amazing, who want to share their stories. They've, they've been inspired by, by listening or reading to other people's stories and, and want to share theirs in the uh, hopes to benefit someone else. This is fascinating because you must have heard of uh, StoryCorps, right? Yes, yes. And this sort of is the visual version of StoryCorps almost. <laughs> would you say, would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, so when you when you go up to a stranger or a, uh, and, and you you have a conversation with them, uh, how usually that takes an incredible amount of courage on your <laughs> part, I imagine, uh, yes. because there are people of all persuasions and sh shapes and sizes, and you know uh, yes. you know some people are uh, you know naturally open and approachable, and some of them are standoffish. Do you approach them all equally, or do you just sort I of do. like? I do. Feel them out and say, hey, let's see who I can talk to next kind of thing. I, ha I have found in the process of, of working up the courage to approach people that even the most intimidating people often soften when they're treated as a human being and, and not some sort of, uh, you know, monster or someone that, that we need to fear. Uh, and so I approach everyone with the same humility and, and humbleness and, and gentleness and sincerity that, that I do each person, whether they have a smile on their face or they're disengaged. Tell me a little bit about your backstory. Okay, I think sure. Pe I think people need to know as to why all of this transpired in the first place. So sure. Uh, my backstory is, is this. I, I suffered uh, since, since I was a teenager with bouts of depression, which uh, I coped with, with uh, medicating myself with drugs or alcohol, isolation, and really had a hard time um, processing some, some challenges in my life. And uh, twice in my life, I became suicidal. Most recently, it was two years ago. I was hospitalized for that. And uh, in the process of being in the hospital, I realized the power of opening up and sharing our stories and being completely vulnerable with one another and uh, I realized in, in the process of doing that, that my situation was not only so bad, but there were other people who had it much worse and, um, and that it was inspiring to hear their stories and to know that there was hope. And so I had picked up a camera shortly before um, this, this most recent bout of depression and, and becoming suicidal. And I had a vision of combining my photography with inspiring quotes and I didn't know how that was going to, to come into to take shape. 
And I approached my friend with the gratitude project and, and um, asked her for some advice. And she suggested taking a look at Humans of New York, which I hadn't heard of yet. And she said for her own project, she wanted a photographer to go and interview people about gratitude. Um, and so that was sort of what this all stemmed from. I hadn't really photographed people prior to that. I was just um, using a camera after I got fired from my job for being depressed and not showing up to work and not being able to get my life together. Mm -hmm. And I started exploring New Haven and taking photos of, of ordinary things and just looking for beauty in, in ordinary places. And um, yeah, seven uh, over 1,200 interviews later, seven months into donating my time and talents to, to her project, I realized, wow, I'm on to something here. I've got to keep doing this. So you've photographed 1,200 people so far? Yeah, over 1,200 people. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Does uh, your, your website is actually a Tumblr website, am I right? Yes. It's all sort of wrapped into that. And you have uh, a, a couple of photographs of the individual and, and then a, just a string of questions that you've, you seem to have transcribed uh, onto the blog. That's fantastic. And I've been reading a few of those. Um, wh when, it, when it comes down to the end goal for you for this project... Mm -hmm. uh, what are you envisioning for, for, for the photographs or for the text? There, there are a couple of things. Uh, I knew ultimately when I started this blog and this project that I wanted to produce a book, uh, which I've done. The first book came out uh, this, this past month in July, and it'll be the first of many volumes, a collection of the portraits and stories. And I think eventually as I gain more and more content, I'll um, publish books that are uh, specific towards certain audiences, whether that be children, whether that be people uh, experiencing challenges with sexuality, different age groups and genres of, of that nature. Um, but I'm also heading out on the road to to reach people in other states across the country uh, to gain more awareness and bring more content to the project. And this is sort of going to be a test run of what I hope to uh, do next year with a filmmaker, a documentary filmmaker, who helped me create the Kickstarter video. Excellent. And uh, we're going to document the journey of this project and the impact that it has uh, with the themes being love, compassion, connection, vulnerability, faith, hope, strength, courage, all, all those things. Mm -hmm. um, and then I hope to be able to give talks to people and inspire them by sharing my story. And yeah. What, what, do, you, what do you think? this is going to do for people like, um, what, what, what would you like for people to take away from this project when they look at the book or when they look at the blog and they read the stories behind the photographs what, what kind of a reaction or response are you hoping they would have I'm hoping that they'll, they'll know that they're not alone in whatever they're experiencing I'm hoping that they'll gain some inspiration from listening to someone else's story and I'm hoping that they'll feel a sense of connection. Um, I think that oftentimes in our society we're disconnected, even though we think that we're very connected through technology and, and whatnot. But we're not sharing who we are authentically with each other, especially the experiences that we're ashamed of or embarrassed to share. And I want this to create that conversation and to make it okay for people to be who they are and to share that with the world. Um, because I think that causes a lot of pain and suffering and leads to suicide when people don't feel like they have a purpose or that they're connected or that there's any meaning in their life. Uh, what, is, what is this project doing for you personally? <laughs> I have not, uh, I've, first of all, I have, I have not been on medication in over a year for depression. I'm going on two years clean and sober and I never feel sorry for myself. I, I just, I don't. Every day I wake up, I know it's a gift. And hearing these stories and connecting with people daily, uh, it's just a reminder, you know, how connected we are and that this human experience is, is universal. We all experience joys and sorrows uh, at different times in our lives. And no one is immune to that, no matter how much money they have or, or where they live. Um, but that we're all in this together, and that is something that gives me hope every day and, and purpose. That's fantastic. Um, you know, I'm just looking at your Kickstarter page, and you have a little over fifty-eight hundred dollars towards this project now. Uh, your goal was three thousand, so you've really gone well <laughs> and well and above uh, the the goal, which which is great. Congratulations. Thank um, you. 
you you've said you're going to be on the road now uh, next year taking this project essentially from state to state uh, to as many cities as possible and, and, and really exploring exploring others other lives you know yes. uh, which is f- absolutely fascinating and, and uh, I'm, I'm a wee bit envious to be honest with you <laughs> uh, because it's it's a project that I would have loved to to have been a part of as well uh, I, I can be I have another 95 minutes to go before I the, the campaign closes so um, <laughs> what what has challenged you about the project not the Kickstarter but I'm talking about the actual project itself has what has like kicked your ass and and you feel like oh I can't do this anymore uh, well, definitely what has kicked my ass many times is the fact that I'm not the strongest typer. Uh, when it comes from my heart and my own thoughts, I'm very, very able and, and uh, very quick at, at getting my feelings out. But uh, when it comes to transcribing these audio interviews, it takes me hours to process them. Luckily, I have a friend who is an editor in a publishing company that has been checking over the punctuation and spelling um, before I publish them, but uh, recently I've realized with the amount of content that I've collected that I can't do it all on my own. So I've had to reach out to my audience and, and ask for help. And I, I had quite a few people offer to start transcribing the interviews, which takes a lot of weight off of my shoulders and allows me to do what I think I'm best at, which is connecting with people, hearing their stories and taking their photos and remaining sort of at the forefront of this project and, and helping it grow. Uh, last question for you, uh, Corey. Uh, when it can, when it comes down to the project itself, um, what would you like to tell other photographers? Um, it's the same message I would I would say to anyone who's listening, and that is, be who you are. Uh, use your talents and gifts. Start where you are. Do what you can with what you have. Uh, and each step will will build that staircase. Uh, I think that this project is an example of that. This was an idea that started in my head, some scribbles on paper, and uh, I just took one step after the other in uncertainty and, and faith, and the road rose up to meet me every time, and it continues to do so. This Kickstarter campaign is a perfect example of that. You know, right. There were definitely points along the way where I was worried that I wouldn't reach the goal and then um, you know it's it succeeded it Indeed. so um, not to turn your pr- a very altruistic project into a more of a marketing idea but sure. uh, there's a, a wonderful uh, business coach named Skip Cohen I don't know if you know him but no. Skip is a marketing guy he's 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 given a lot to this photo industry uh, and one of the ideas that he had mentioned in one of his presentations at, in uh, at a conference just a few months ago, uh, was to go around town and photograph business owners and tell their stories and be able to connect with as many business owners as possible and highlight them and celebrate them and put them up on your blog. And, and what you're doing is scaled, you know, obviously to the nation. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to go from coast to coast. But yes. uh, I guess my, my point is you don't really have to do that. You don't have to go coast to coast. You can do no. a lot right there in your in your own town in New Haven. Yes, you you found twelve hundred people to photograph, uh, which is phenomenal. You know you you know you. you've actually been able to connect and uh, you know inspire twelve hundred people just by your actions of giving and giving them the time and space to speak their mind. You know a lot yes. of people don't get that, don't no. have that opportunity, and I think. Uh, you've just inspired me now to get off my butt and go out and do what <laughs> Skip has been telling me to do for the longest time. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Corey, I wish you all the best, and I, I look forward to seeing the book or the books, actually, uh, hopefully in the near future. I hope to uh, order a couple, so hopefully we can we can do some, uh, some exchanges there. Um, Absolutely. Thanks, and good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye.